Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgamertguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create a seamless sparkle pattern all done in vectors and apply it to objects like this text. There are a lot of bitmap based textures for sparkles out there along with tutorials on how to create it using the pixel persona or Photoshop. I just find it as easy to create and a lot easier to adjust when using vectors. I've done some tutorials on seamless patterns in the past. If you haven't seen them, maybe it's a good time to check those out. The process I'm using here is pretty much the same. I'm starting with a square as the base tile. I'll create a pattern that I'll then duplicate and move around within this tile using the nudge setting. So the rectangle is 200 by 200 millimeters and the nudge will be set to 200 millimeters. So each time I press the cursor key, the element is being moved by exactly the width or height of our base tile. That way it's really easy to create a seamless pattern. So I'm copying the base of my design, a circle with a slight gradient, a few times scale it around, fill up the canvas and create a interesting pattern that does not look too repetitive when copied across. I chose a symbol for this in order to be able to do adjustments later on. I'm not sure it is the best idea looking back now because using symbols is a little bit of a risky thing if there are too many. It might be better to just work with groups rather than symbols unless you plan on doing a lot of variations. In the preferences under tools you can adjust the nudge setting. I set it to the size of my initial square which is 200 millimeters. I took my initial pattern, grouped that and turned it into a symbol again in order to make changes later on and everything will be changed. Here you can see everything that is at the top or bottom or the left and right overlapping the rectangle needs to be duplicated and moved to the other side. So when something is on the top, I duplicate it, press the cursor key down and the duplicate will be placed exactly at the spot it needs to be to create a similar style. Again, trying to fill the square with something that looks interesting, non-repetitive. I just created one base pattern. If you create a few and use them, it will look less repetitive and might look more interesting. I select all the symbols and move them inside the square as a clip mask and then turn the square into a symbol itself. That way I can create a live preview by creating four duplicates and placing them next to each other. Thanks to the adjustment in the notch preference, moving it with the cursor key will place them exactly where they need to be. It looks nice and random and not too repetitive. I group them all and start with the next layer. For that layer I group a symbol, give it a color overlay in black and reduce the transparency to 30 and then start duplicating that just as I did with the lighter version. As soon as something is crossing the edge of the rectangle, I duplicate it and place it on the opposite side. I tried to leave not too many obvious gaps and then group the whole bunch of black dots and create the next layer on top. This one will be the original white symbol grouped and set to 30% transparency so we get a lighter layer above the very light and on top of the dark dots. So by layering that we get a more intricate, more detailed look and repetitions won't be quite that obvious. I'm adding some more darker shapes as well. You want a 
pattern where the background is not dominant but the pattern on top of the background is. A quick note on the background, I choose a 50% black for the background as it is the most versatile color when using layer blend modes later on. For a bit of extra sparkle, I add another symbol to the scene, group it and add a Gaussian blur to this group. At this stage, the inevitable happened and I edited the base symbol, which is the circle. With this many objects already on the screen, the program decided to stop working. So crashes happen and that's why the symbol idea might not be the best option. Try and see if it works for you, otherwise work with groups. It, it took a little bit of fiddling around with the recovery file to get it to work again. I'm adding a few duplicates of the white blurred pattern on top of the design. Try and fill the square evenly so you don't have one blob in one corner and an empty corner on the other end. That way it would be visible that the pattern is repeating. Just like the big black blob that is visible in the tiling and I didn't see during the recording but fixed afterwards. I'm adding a few more blurred circles to fill areas that feel empty, have too big a gap or just stand out for a different reason. Lastly, I'm adding a star shape. I adjust it a little bit, make it thinner and add a Gaussian blur to it. It'll just be an added shine on top and making it more interesting. Using just a circle to create a base pattern and repeating that pattern over and over again and finally adding the star on top, I created a simple seamless sparkle effect pattern. You can either use it as the vector shape. I decided to export it to PNG and then use the PNG file for the next part. I'm using a simple text. Just make sure the text is thick enough to actually show the sparkle. A really thin line won't display anything. I duplicate the pattern and put it inside the text as a clip mask. You can play around with the layer blend mode. I found the linear light works best with this kind of effect. I add a color gradient to increase the shine alternating from light to dark colors and some layer effects. An outer shadow except it's set to add rather than multiply. That way I get a double glow because I want to use the outer glow with the white a 3D effect and a bevel give the letters some volume. Lastly, I'm adding some stars to bring out the idea of the sparkle even more. Fading the pattern with a transparent gradient softens it a little bit towards the bottom. And we have the final design. Seeing I used a text that is still fully editable, it's easy to make changes, changing the wording, changing the color. You can see the pink is still working nicely with the pattern. I'm moving the stars around and adjusting the outer shadow from the yellow to the pink, adding a gradient to the lettering. With a few changes, we created a new design. The pattern works just the same on different shapes and colors. Play around with it, make your own glitter effect, add more sparkle, less sparkle, see what works for the project you're after and just have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new today, hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below what you like to see on this channel or on my website and I'll see you again soon.